UK broadband is a disgrace, why the government needs to improve our speeds fast. When I hear Culture Secretary Matt Hancock blathering on about Britain's great digital economy I feel like having him kidnapped and sent up to the corner of the highlands where I was staying a few weeks ago. Once he is incarcerated I will tell him to email me a short video begging for his release. That should shut him up. If my experience is anything to go by he could still be tearing his hair out several days later. Even sending a short email took me an agonizing half hour. A survey by which magazine last week revealed that there are still 11 local authority areas in Britain where average broadband speeds fail to reach the minimum of 10 megabits per second, MBPs, which the government has promised every household will have by 2020. And that is average speed. If your home is more than a couple of miles from the nearest telephone exchange your connection could be a lot lower than this. You don't have to be in a remote location to get lousy broadband. The London Borough of Southwark lies just across the river from the city, where traders rely on rapid connections. Yet average broadband speeds there are just 10.4 Mbps meaning that it could take hours to download a movie. Superfast broadband finally reached my house last year and I live just 10 miles from Cambridge, which we keep being told is the technology capital of Europe. You don't have to be in a remote location to get lousy broadband. The London Borough of Southwark lies just across the river from the city, where traders rely on rapid connections. Yet average broadband speeds there are just 10.4 Mbps meaning that I. Ross Clark By the time it arrived it had become agonizing trying to do anything on the internet so many websites today assume that you have good broadband and won't function properly if you don't. Businesses that are trying to operate without proper broadband are at a huge disadvantage. Good broadband is no longer a luxury it is as essential a utility as water and electricity. If you cannot take orders or bookings online, you cannot do business. If you are off the main grid for electricity you might be able to buy a generator. It is a lot harder to set up your own broadband service. Public services assume that everyone is online. If you have to fill in a VAT form or corporate tax return, for example, there is no longer a paper option it has to be done online. And of course if you miss the deadline for filing because your internet connection has failed, still you face penalties. While broadband speeds have steadily increased over the years, Britain has been slipping inexorably behind other countries as they advance much faster. I have dug out a series of reports over the past few years which compared the average connections in Britain with those elsewhere in the world. In 2013 we were 9th. The following year we had dropped to 13th, then in 2015 to 18th. By last August when MLab, a consortium of several US university technology departments, measured global broadband speeds by conducting 63 million speed tests around the world. Britain had dropped to 31st. Average speeds here came out at 16.5 Mbps, less than a third of the 55 Mbps they measured in Singapore. In Europe, Britain came in at just 20th, behind many former communist countries in Eastern Europe. It is a disgrace for the world's fifth largest economy. Moreover, as a small, densely populated country we have little excuse for poor connections anywhere. Yet for years, rural areas and even some urban districts have been allowed to drag behind the speeds enjoyed in the best spots. According to a report by the British Infrastructure Group of MPs last July, 6.7 million households still can't obtain speeds of 10 Mbps. Not only that but broadband speeds can vary hugely based on the time of day. According to an Ofcom report many people find their connection slowing down by half during busy periods. In December the government said it was going to give us all a legal right to have broadband of at least 10 Mbps by 2020. So presumably if I find myself in a remote area struggling to send an email I will be able to sue the government. That is nice to know although I wouldn't bet on anyone succeeding in wringing any compensation out of them. 
I wouldn't be surprised if by 2020 the only way to contact a public servant is by filling in an online form something which obviously you won't be able to do if you haven't got a functioning internet connection. Getting hold of broadband in Britain is such a miserable experience because, like other utilities, it occupies a strange no-man's land between the private and public sectors. There is no proper competition and nor is there direct government responsibility. Of course notionally there are plenty of broadband providers from which you can choose. You can have Premiership football thrown in, or even a Marks and Spencer gift card. Yet whichever company you choose, in most cases your broadband will be reliant on the old network of copper wires which were laid down decades ago for your telephone line. This network is still owned by BT, through its wholesale arm OpenReach. OpenReach is supposed to provide the same quality of service to all customers, whether they subscribe to BT or not. But as I found to my cost a few years ago you can find yourself in limbo when your internet connection fails. An engineer from TalkTalk, Talk, who provided my internet service, blamed the OpenReach wires and an engineer from OpenReach blamed my TalkTalk Talk router. I spent days on the phone to call centers all over Asia before I managed to get things fixed. There seems to be a similar vacuum of responsibility when it comes to rolling out superfast broadband. For years the government and OpenReach have tried to pass the buck between each other. There never was a proper plan for getting superfast broadband into the last 5% of homes those which are expensive to supply thanks to their location. The government expected OpenReach to cover the cost and OpenReach thought the government should pay. Meanwhile ministers carried on with their digital first policy, moving all public services online oblivious to the fact that there are still many households which can't properly access the internet at all. It wouldn't matter so much if we could all simply switch to mobile broadband instead. But you can forget that in my house. Often, I can't even get a mobile phone signal, let alone get online. There is a small hill, it turns out between my house and the mast from which my phone tries to take its signal. The UK has a proud history of digital innovation, reads the government's digital strategy, from the earliest days of computing to the development of the World Wide Web, the UK has been a cradle for inventions which have changed the world. If we really are to become the best country in the world in which to start a digital business, as it goes on to say, it is no use resting on past successes. We need world-beating broadband and fast.